Follow me to a place where incredible feats are routine every hour or so. An enchantment runs rampant, just wild in the streets. Open sesame. Here we go. Arabian night, like Arabian days. They tease and excite, pick off and take flight. They shock and amaze. Like your sword, you want air, don't get bored, don't get beaten, oh god, you might. Come on down, stop on by, hop a carpet and fly to another Arabian night. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Dungeon Dives, where we'll be tackling the ruins of Ankaraj, aka AQ20, and we'll talk about everything you need to know for your first time in this new 20-man raid. In the description, there are timestamps for specific parts of the video if you're looking for that. But before we jump into the raid, first we need to talk about the reputation and other important details about this new raid tier. A lot of the gear you'll be wanting to get your hands on in this new raid tier is token based kind of like ZG, but a bit more complicated. Each class has a 3 set which includes a ring, cape, and weapon. In order to get these items, you need a specific set of 10 scarabs, 2 idols, and 1 Karaji piece. The scarabs drop from mobs in the raid. Idols can also drop from mobs in the raid, as well as scarab coffers, which are treasure chests around the raid that can be opened with a scarab coffer key, an item dropped from mobs in the raid. And Karaji pieces drop from bosses in the raid. So for example, let's say I wanted the Hunter Ring. In order to get it, I need 5 Golden Scarabs, 5 Clay Scarabs, 2 Amber Idols, and 1 Karaji Ceremonial Ring. You will also need Reputation with the Cenarian Circle to get these items. In order to get the Ring, you'll need to be Honored, Revered for the Cape, and Exalted for the Weapon. You can gain Cenarian Circle Rep by running AQ20 or AQ40, or doing outdoor activities in Silithus. All bosses in the instance can also drop class tomes which increases the rank of spells. These will cost a very pretty penny on the auction house, especially at the start of the raid tier. Okay, so now with all that being said, I think we are ready to jump into the ancient ruins of AQ20. Welcome to the Ruins of Ankaraj. This place is very similar to Zul Grub in the fact that it's really, really easy for the most part, but is also a great catch-up raid for new players. Thankfully, a lot of the trash here won't be an issue. Just be careful with pulling them and AoEing them down and you should be good. The only notable trash mobs here are the Karaji Gladiators that hit really fast and really hard, so they should be your top priority. Clear your way to the next area to face the first boss, Kiranax. Jesus. What is that? What the fuck is that? First off, Kiranax has a cleave, so face him away from the party, and it also applies a debuff that reduces healing by 10% for each stack. Because of this, you'll want an off tank to taunt the boss, so the debuff can fall off of the other tank. You will also teleport a random player in front of him. Um, just move away. The most important ability Kiranax has is Sand Trap. He will spawn these swelling piles of sand that will explode, deal damage, silence the player, and reduce their hit chance by 75% and last 20 seconds. So it's safe to say, don't stand in it, especially if you're a healer. The explosion radius is larger than the actual animation, so get really far away. And uh, good luck dealing with this melee. At 30% he enrages, but he is pretty easy to kill. He drops this loot. We can now jump right into the next boss, General Rajax. This fight is like a gauntlet where you'll need to fight a total of 7 waves of enemies. In order to start the encounter, you'll need to talk to the Calderai elites and their oddly homoerotic leader, 
Lieutenant General Androv. Without further interruption, let's celebrate and suck some dick. The NPCs that will be helping you in this fight are actually really important as they can pull a decent amount of DPS and tank adds, so make sure your healers keep them alive. This fight is more about endurance rather than speed. CC is very important if your group is undergeared, so fears and tingling roots, sheeps, all that sort of stuff. General Rajax himself has a disarm, and he also has an ability called Thunder Crash, which reduces everyone's health by 50% and knocks them back. Think of it kind of like Force Punch from the Tiger Boss from ZG. Just have your tank's back be against the wall, and you should be good. He drops this loot. From this point, you could go straight to the last boss if you wanted to, but of course, we'll be talking about the optional bosses, so go right. On your way, you'll bump into these obsidian destroyers. They aren't dangerous or anything, but if you're a miner, you can harvest large obsidian shards, which are used to craft valuable gear that you can obtain a recipe for through Scenarian Circle Rep. Just keep that in mind. Moam is the next boss, and he's probably my favorite because it's all about... Suck. <laughs> During the fight, Moam will use Drain Mana, which will drain all of the caster's mana in the group. The problem is, when he gets the full mana, he'll cast Arcane Eruption, which will deal huge AoE that will most definitely wipe your group. So Priests, Hunters, and Warlocks, it is your job to use your mana draining abilities to make sure that does not happen. 90 seconds into the fight, he'll turn to Stone, which will make him invulnerable, and he'll summon 3 Mana Fiends. If possible, have your Warlocks banish two of them and kill one at a time. After another 90 seconds, he'll be vulnerable again, rinse and repeat, and Moam will die. He drops this loot. Now you can either go straight up the stairs and then go through the last boss's little arena, or you can backtrack back. Um, just for simplicity, we are going to backtrack back and go over to Buru. Buru is in the most disgusting pit imaginable. There's like just, just this most vile, disgusting model in all of Warcraft, and it's like this bug, and it's wrapped around this veiny, like, bulbous thing, and it just is not family appropriate at all. The Buru fight is unique in that you cannot actually hurt him for the first 80%. The only way to hurt him is you need to destroy the eggs around the room when he's standing on top of them. So when the boss is pulled, spread your DPS out so that all the eggs are around 10%, and during the fight he will target a random member of the raid and walk towards them. This player needs to kite Buru over one of the eggs so your DPS can destroy it and damage the boss. Destroying an egg also summons an ad, so kill that too. Positioning is very important during this fight, so be prepared to be in a position where you can easily kite the boss without pulling him away from an egg, or be really close to the boss and be meleeed by him. At 20%, Buru's carapace will explode, revealing that squishy little brain of his, and a bunch of adds will spawn, so quickly AoE them down, because now, it's a DPS race. He will cast Creeping Plague on the whole raid, and it will continue to deal damage and ramp up the longer the fight goes on, so kill him quickly. He drops this loot. Follow the insect-ridden part of AQ, pass the bug testicles, and clear all the mobs in the comb so you can face Aemis the Hunter. Aemis is unique in the fact that she will stay in the air until her health drops below 70%, so your casters will have to tank the boss's attacks. She will use an ability called Poison Stinger, which applies stacks of nature damage. Ideally, you'd want a range DPS with a bunch of natures as gear to tank these stacks, but if you don't, you'll just have to spread it equally between all of your range DPS so nobody dies. The most important ability during this fight is Aemis will teleport a player to the altar in the back and stun them. A larva will then slowly travel up the stairs and infest the player and birth out as an elite wasp, which kills the player. Which is not only disgusting, but also very dangerous, so it's Melee's job to kill the larva before it reaches the player so this does not happen. Lastly, at some point in the fight, a wave of adds will spawn but can quickly be AoE'd down because of their very, very small health pool. And like I said, at 70% she will land and she needs to be tanked normally, but you may want two tanks because of the stacking nature damage that will continue to go on. And she drops this loot. Head up the stairs to face the last boss, but before we do that we need to fight the most annoying trash in any raid so far, the Anubisath Guardians. And they randomly come with two of these five abilities. 
Plague, which is a dot that harms all of the players around you. Shadow Bolt Volley, which is AoE damage. Meteor, which is AoE damage, but it's divided between the raid when everyone stacks. Explode, which is a self-destruct at 10%, just kill him before he finishes the cast. And Thunderclap, which is more AoE damage for anybody in melee range. Like I said, they can only have two of these five abilities, but they can also reflect fire and arcane spells or shadow and frost spells. To find out which one he's reflecting, have a mage use detect magic on the guardians. And if it's fire and arcane, that spell will be reflected since it's arcane. Oh yeah, he will also spawn these ghost adds. Kill them. Clear out all of the guardians in the room and prepare yourself for a heavy sandstorm that engulfs the ruins of Ankaraj and you will face or a siren, the unscarred. Sands of the desert, rise and block out the sun! When the boss is pulled, he will have a buff on him called Supreme Mode, which increases his damage dealt by 300%, meaning that he is going to one-shot your tanks. In order to remove this buff, you'll need to drag him over to the crystals all around the arena. Activating a crystal when he is next to it takes him out of Supreme Mode for 45 seconds. The most efficient strat is to have two players, preferably a hunter or a druid with their speed increase, run around like an idiot around the edges of the room and activate as many crystals as they can. This will force new crystals to spawn in the center of the room so the tank and the rest of the raid doesn't have to move around as much. In order to pull the boss, you'll want somebody on an epic mount that pulls him and kites him over to one of the crystals so the crystal can be activated and the supreme buff goes down and you can start damaging the boss. When he is not in his supreme mode, he will also be susceptible to a school of magic and will take 100% increased damage. While yes, this is nice for casters, you need to also keep in mind the boss cannot be taunted, so it can be very, very easy to pull aggro, so just be aware. This brings me to my next point. This boss is a bitch to tank. As a tank, you'll need to focus on keeping aggro as much as possible, but he also has an ability called Enveloping Winds, which will stun the tank for 10 seconds. It's recommended that you use a free action potion to avoid the spell, but you can also have an off tank. But again, if you have two tanks, holding aggro is going to be really annoying during this fight. The boss will also cast War Stomp, which knocks all of the melee back and deals damage. You can use this to your advantage to get closer to a crystal, or it can seriously hinder you. Healers, you also need to keep in mind your positioning because the tank can be punted out of your range. Also, there's an AoE Curse of Tongues that will need to be dispelled quickly. And also, there's flying tornadoes around during this whole fight. This fight is a real... It's, it's rough, man. And I strongly recommend that you don't do it with a pug and really focus on teamwork between your fellow raid mates. Do that, and he should be dead, and he drops this loot. He also drops the Helm of Domination, um, that's the same name as the Lich King's helmet, the same helmet that was torn apart and ripped a hole in space and time to the Shadowlands, so um, if you get it, congrats! He also drops his head, which is needed for a quest, and uh, this is the loot that you get from it. And that is AQ20. Thanks for joining me, I hope you get some cool loot, and run this place over and over again. If you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. We're almost at 100k as of recording this, so I'll see you guys later. Bye.